Um, the ingredients for life, at least here on earth, are fairly easy to figure out. All we have to do is look around us and analyze the uh, living things that we know and see what they're made of. So uh, most living organisms, well, all living organisms are built of proteins. So proteins are the molecular components that do the work in a living cell. So these are sources of energy um, and you know, sources, ways to store energy. They do other jobs with, within cells. And all proteins are made of amino acids. So these are the building blocks of proteins. So then the question is, well, okay, where do those amino acids come from? If we need proteins to build life and we need amino acids to build proteins, then how do we get the amino acids? And um, there was an experiment in the 1950s that tried to figure out how we could generate amino acids in an earth like environment. So in, a, in an environment similar to early Earth, uh, this is called the Miller-Urey experiment. And essentially what they did was they put um, gases such as water, methane, ammonia, and hydrogen that would resemble Earth's early atmosphere into a closed system. And then through that closed system, they flowed hot water. So they you know, heated up water on one side, drove it through the gases, and they applied electrical sparks. And so the water vapor and the electrical sparks together um, sort of mimic maybe the sort of weather conditions you would have on early earth. And what they found was when they analyzed what built up in the trap at the end, uh, they had produced more than 20 types of amino acids. This experiment has been reproduced now many times. And so it shows that yes, you can produce amino acids in a sort of, you know, non-living environment. So the precursors to life, the amino acids, those could have formed on early earth, but maybe they formed somewhere else and came to early earth later, right? That's totally possible. And so NASA did an experiment that's sometimes called the icy Miller-Urey experiment, where they um, basically in the lab environment took the types of materials you might find in a space such as ammonia and methanol ice, and then in deep space conditions, so very low pressures and temperatures, they expose those to ultraviolet light, like you might get from a young star. And they find that they produce 16 types of amino acids. So it's totally possible that amino acids formed on Earth, or they could have formed in the space environment and been delivered to Earth later by, I don't know, asteroids, meteors, that type of thing. So there are possibilities for forming amino acids not particularly mysterious. My question for you is, do you suppose that we have found any amino acids outside of Earth? So we know they can be made in a space environment, but have we ever actually found any in a space environment? Good guess, or maybe you've read this before. Yes, we have found amino acids outside of Earth. So actually in a few different places. First of all, we've found amino acids in meteorites. Um, I think the most famous is called the Murchison meteorite. We have found amino acids um, by spectroscopy in interstellar molecular clouds. So maybe some of you from 122 remember that. We have found amino acids in comets. So perhaps those of you from 121 remember that. And it's possible that amino acids are generated in Venus's atmosphere by the generation or by um, UV radiation processes. Um, so this is a preprint on the archive if you're curious to read more. So those are the ingredients for life. Um, and so we've got our proteins, amino acids, they could be made on earth, they could be made in space, but then you also need to tell the proteins what to do. So DNA is how living things that we know here on earth store instructions for how to create more proteins. And the the DNA is made of what we call nucleotides. So um, adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. And those pair up in different ways. And the order of those base pairs uh, is interpreted by cellular machinery to put together different proteins. So if that sounds really complicated, it is. And I think biology is much more complicated than physics in that way. So how do we get the DNA? How do we get these nucleotides? 